morning everybody I'm Dan and this is Dan's 30 foot dory belt I've been talking uh, about how to uh, sand and possibly scrape the finish after fiber rasing your boat um, tips from a shipwright I was watching I watch his YouTube channel a lot and um, he's he suggested using a paint scraper uh, I just purchased this one the other day it's uh, called a Red Devil. It's a large, it's a three inch scraper. And uh, I just tried it out here a little bit just to see how it would work. So what he's suggesting to do is to scrape as much off as you can. Uh, so you can uh, get it down to a, sm a, re a responsibly smooth surface, I guess. And then come in with a sander. And the whole idea behind this is to save uh, breathing in all you see the way this just cuts it just just trims all that fiberglass off no dust so it's a little safer so i finally um completed fiberglassing this unit except for the last nine feet on the port side in the front i have to pick up another nine feet of uh, mat but before i do that i got a lot of work ahead of me and that's trying to, to get all the highs and lows out of here because you know when you're cut I put a patch here it overlaps onto the existing finish and it raises that area up you got a ridge line here wherever you put a patch in so what I'm doing here is I pick this up I'm just as I'm just trying this I've never done this before <laughs> literally snowing look at that so there's no dust and you just take your time and draw back on it and it's just ripping it off now I have bumps here I don't know what produce them probably little heavier sections of um, resin but they're coming down I don't know if you can see that in the camera. I'll bring you a little closer here in a minute. But all this edge in here, all in here was like scary, sharp. You know, you you run your hand over and it's like, oof, <laughs> you stab yourself, right? the tail end of a sheet here extremely bumpy look at that it just scrapes it right off you can see wherever there's a run here or an overlap I should say or even a run you can say a run the high, it's a high spot it's just pulling it all out and it's uh it's really taking it out of there really good it's not a bad deal sorry i kicked you there i'm gonna try to get you to see that a little better you don't need me in the picture for sure so i think that's good okay so 
So you come in. Now I made that sander with the 50 grit um, sandpaper holder. And it cuts through this really nice too, but all these high spots here, you can save a lot of time by using a paint scraper and knocking them down. And as long as they're high, they'll just keep on cutting them down. See that? Now another thing I notice, now this has been a couple of days since this has been fiberglassed. So it's as hard as, as I, I, it's as hard as I think it's going to get. But here is a section where I laid glass down. And there's really no bumps there, it's just finish fiberglass and resin. It scrapes it off a bit. There's highs there, obviously. And you know you're done near it. This, this is good for paper now. But this, there's a sheet here, there's an overlap. This, this came down, the corner came around, so there's an overlap. There was a large section in here, it was short of material, so I, I added an extra piece in here and it goes all the way to the bottom, to the top, or the bottom of the boat here. So all this is rough, you can feel that's rough. doing a really nifty job just ripping it out now this red devil has four sides to it now I notice this is a straight edge this is another straight edge here there's another straight edge here nope sorry this is not it this is sort of concaved here so I guess if you're going around something a little round with some radius to it the the sides will drag if you go over a flat surface so look at your blade before you adjust it these are about $10 a piece to replace right now on Amazon. Not too bad. Say so, so it's giving you one, two, three, four surfaces to work with. In my case, one, two, three, because I won't have to use this slightly curved edge on this one. So you gotta look at it before you throw it on. Before just check it on something flat. Make sure you got the flat edge where you need it. back and forth motion sheets to work a little too. Okay, so it doesn't come off in 30 seconds. You got to work at it. But this feels a lot better than it did before I started. See, here's a ruffle. Here's a ruffle right here. getting to it I'm getting to it this is quite high I think this is like one two three layers of fiberglass here maybe I should have thought out the way I laid it out beforehand you know with the way you fold it when you're applying it um, I threw this patch on here assuming hey no problem let's go for it but I have created myself a bit of work 
all the way down this edge right to the top of the boat or the bottom here so now this is a third level see so that would be one two three one two three so I created myself a little bit of extra work here um, but it I, I had trouble filling these corners in because my material came down here my other material ended here and I had a big hole right here so I just slapped a patch over it perhaps I should have been a little bit more diligent in uh, trimming it out more and get it closer instead of just throwing it on there I probably would have saved myself a lot of work I'll admit it okay so it's scraping it really nice this is almost level here you know this of course comes down to uh this comes down to uh depending what kind of finisher you want on your boat now you take this area for instance in here this is like flat there's two layers on here there are no overlaps there's no piecing in okay that was a ruffle in the material you know when it gathers and I didn't even see it Look at that, it's flat. There's another one there, didn't see it. It's coming out. That's flat. A couple of more ruffles down there. Just took them out. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. See that? I've got the odd bubble I'm gonna have to grind that out and re-epoxy it and put a real small patch of cloth in there I actually got about six of these maybe seven small ones throughout the whole boat I noticed that um, it must have popped up after I have gone on but that that'll have to be uh, I should actually go around with a marker mark them all out I also have small dips here where um, <laughs> I believe an insect has landed and got caught up with the work see this would probably only have to be resined up a bit it's still got to fare out the whole boat but these are just here's another bubble here this one gave me a hard time I don't know what the deal is with this one but you're gonna get them, okay? Yeah, there's another one's almost level. Yeah, that's So there you have it so after I've uh, taken my time and unfortunately it won't be today because the uh, skies tell us we're about to have rain I just wanted to come out here and just uh, excuse me I 
I just wanted to come out here today and uh, do a little quick uh, demo here. Look, at uh, this is untouched down here. I don't know if you can see that. Once again, look at all those high spots. They get scraped up. This is material coming off, right? It works. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's an option. Or you can get uh, get uh, paper on your belt. And start sanding it across. Sanding the... Goes to go nuts sanding. At one point I will have to put a, a, a sander to it. I've got a... Uh, orbital palm sander and I'll pick up some uh, I don't know maybe 50 grit or 60 grit and um, it's starting to rain now and uh, go over the whole boat um, I'm still wondering if I should put actually another coat of epoxy over it I have a lot left I'm sure it wouldn't take three gallons just to coat it again it took about uh, four gallons so far to cover this 30 foot boat with six ounce epoxy uh six ounce cloth and epoxy so uh, i'm thinking if i were to just roll it all out one more time with uh, one more coat of epoxy after sanding it it'll make it a little smoother and make my fairing a little bit easier because i haven't looked into that material yet for fairing But uh, once you've got this edge, cut this down. And getting all those really sharp highs off. There's really not much else to do but sand. I mean, I, I can safely run my hand across there now and not worried about getting stabbed. I, I, you know, I used to do body work on cars and um, I've just got this thing about getting things as nice as possible because whatever you do on this now will actually affect your finish so if you want a really nice smooth looking finish you got to put the work into prepping the uh, the surface you're working on because if you don't do that and after you paint it you will see all these high spots and you will see all these edges when the sunlight hits it, uh, unless you're not worried about it. I've seen some YouTuber build these boats, not this particular style, and um, they're going to flip the boat over. It's sunny outside, and basically what they've done is they've um, built the boat, they fiberglassed it, they did a tiny bit of sanding on it just to get the real edges off and then they painted it and as they're flipping it over you can see that ha has not really been finished the uh, the exterior has not really been finished they just basically said let's build a boat we'll fiberglass it and then we'll just paint it and we'll flip it over and we're gonna go and use it and that's fine because that's their decision uh, mine's not going to be 110% perfect either, but it's I make an effort in trying to make it as smooth as possible. So you got nudgies everywhere here.
So it takes it down, guys, okay? See that? These are smooth now. Smooth enough to move on and... Cleans it up pretty quick. So you got a knot over here, I don't know what this is. Well, whatever that is, it's gone. I just leveled it, so. Need a little filler on that. There you go. I want to apologize for getting my back. I take some shots where I'm working. Like I was finishing up the, uh, the epoxy up front there on the starboard side and I kept on putting my back in the camera. I apologize, I had not much choice. I gotta watch how I rotate my legs and sometimes they just have to do that. <laughs> okay, so. That's feeling pretty smooth now. It's, it, it's rough, but it feels smooth. It's taking all the highs off. It's gonna take a little, little bit more work. That's the, uh, right here is your material, your six, your six ounce mat is right there. I don't want to take it down too far. I mean, we put it on for a reason. But this is just one section. I still have work to do on this. All this bottom edge still has to be done. I just thought I'd come out here today because I think uh, I think it might rain this weekend again so picking and choosing when I can come out here and work on this is going to be tough again. I don't know why we're getting so much rain. Like insects all over the place. I did a small memorial the other day when I was working on the front. <laughs> Thanking all the insects for coming to see but not leaving. <laughs> Yeah, it's ripping right through that. So I'm going to leave this alone today. And uh, give me one second here, folks. Just one second, sorry. There you go. So this is called a Red Devil. It's a paint scraper. Uh, I think they go down to two inch. I picked up the three inch, which is the largest one they have. And uh, the tool seems to be quite satisfactory. Comes with a handle on the top so you can apply that pressure, This is what, which is nice. Uh, you can get wooden paint scrapers and they don't come with handles and you just put your palm your hand on the top of it and you scrape down usually is what you do but I like the handle on this is handy because you know you get to hang on to it and apply that pressure it seems to be well built we'll have to see it wasn't a lot of money I think I paid $14 for it Amazon yes that guy's doing really good isn't he anyway yeah this is called a red devil just in case you're interested. It's a solid tool, feels solid, it doesn't flex. Don't know what else to tell you about it. And uh, all this, look at that, I can run my hand up and down here, this is nice. Now, you, it gets dull, you remove the blade with the screw here, and you can take a file to this edge to resharpen it. So you got three, four shots at it before the blade gets really dull. Uh, don't be, don't be afraid to get a, a, a stone 
You can run it across a stone with some water on it. That'll sharpen that edge up. As long as that edge is sharp and they will dull, it'll cut this. It'll cut right through it. So my experience using this is zero. Um, my experience is what you're seeing right now. So I'm giving you my honest opinion. I like the scraping method. It levels it quickly and then come in with paper. And I think you'll get less clogging paper, maybe. But definitely will save you some time trying to get down to the surface. Look at that, eh? Well, you know what they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Right. Okay, so there you have it. So that's it for me today, unless the sun comes out. I don't like working in this kind of rain. It's very cold today. Well, very cold. It's just not comfortable. I like to be comfortable when I work. Like I said, I'm doing this for fun. And if you can't have fun, why are you doing it for? Okay, anyway, this, I'm Dan with Dan's 30 foot dory build. My next video, I would like to, I'm going to be thanking a lot of people for sending me some good words on uh, my YouTube channel. I have a whole list of people I'm going to go through and perhaps mention a few other things. So until then, this is Dan with Dan's 30 foot dory build. Thank you very much to my 67 subscribers. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I'll do my best to entertain you. Have a good one.